Hi, I would like to show you how to reconcile a Square Merchant account with your QuickBooks using 2QBO Convert Pro by MoneyFund. What are we doing here? We're downloading all the individual Square transactions into QuickBooks via bank feeds. And we're going to be able to reconcile every Square payment with an invoice payment or sales receipt that was previously created in QuickBooks. We are going to be working on QuickBooks for Windows, Pro, Premiere, or Enterprise. However, this could also work with QuickBooks Mac or QuickBooks Online. It would actually work the exact same way. Now, how is this different than integrating Square with QuickBooks? There are ways to download Square transactions into QuickBooks, which are called integration. However, integration is different than downloading them with our example here, because we are going to uh, not create new transactions. We're going to download them into reconcilable account, which will allow us to match uh, the payments from Square into QuickBooks. Now, how we're going to do this? The first step is you would download your Square transactions into a CSV file or an Excel file. Then we would convert that file into a .qbo file using the tool that we're going to demonstrate here called 2qbo convert pro. Then we're going to import the .qbo file into QuickBooks and then we're going to reconcile the payments using the online banking or bank feeds. Let's take a look at the Excel file or the CSV file that we downloaded from Square. This is an example of a, a, a file that contains a couple of payments. As you can see, we have five payments in total. These payments contain a collected amount, which is basically what we collect from our customer, the fees, which is what Square charges us for every transaction, and the net amount of the two. <clears throat> for the time being, we only really want is the collected amount because these are the amounts that we're going to match up with our QuickBooks invoices, and the fees because we need to charge those fees to an expense account called transaction fees or merchant fees. So this is what the Excel or the CSV file looks like. Next step is we're going to go ahead and close that and we're going to open our conversion tool, which is called 2QBO Convert Pro. I'm going to clear the log here to make it easy. So the first thing I do is I'm going to click on settings. And in settings is when I'm going to tell the system what the bank name is for Square, the account number, etc. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to go into QuickBooks FID, I'm going to click on Lookup, and as I type Square, uh, Square is not really a bank, so there happens to be another bank here called Square Bank, so we'll use this one, um, but it's not really the same exact bank, however, it's just a good reference point, so we'll just call it Square One Bank, we'll hit OK. Account number, uh, if you are, have multiple Square accounts, then this matters. If you don't, then I could just put the number one and that's it, that, that's the account number that's going to download. Down here where it says separate splits, you have to select this option because this is the option that allows me to take two separate columns and split them into separate transactions. So separate splits is an option that we have to leave open, that we have to check it. So we'll hit OK. Next thing is we'll click on Convert. After I click on Convert, it's going to ask me to choose the Excel file or the CSV file that I want to convert. I'm going to go ahead and select it, and then I'm going to click on Preview. Now what the Preview screen does, it shows you sort of what the spreadsheet looks like, and it gives you the opportunity down here to select the mapping for each column. So I have to make sure that this is, this is the mapping that QuickBooks reads, um, and then up here, this is what the spreadsheet looks like. So I have to make sure I match up the correct columns with how QuickBooks is going to read the information. I'm going to hit clear here for a second, that way none of the mapping is set and I have, I'm going to set it up from scratch. So the first thing is I'm going to choose the date. So depending on what I'm trying to achieve, I may choose the deposit date or payment date. In this particular case, they're the same. So I'm going to pick the second one here and I'll click on date. Now I need the date column to download into QuickBooks because without that it won't work. The next thing is the payee. Now right now none of these really um, have, a, have the customer's name and this is more of a Square's fault because Square doesn't download the customer's name so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to match up the payments but at least with the amounts we're able to do such a thing. 
So we can come here into transaction ID and we can choose this as payee. That way basically every single transaction will come in with its own uh, individual coding in it. Now this doesn't mean anything, but it should mean something when we download it into QuickBooks. Um, <clears throat> then this one called payment ID, maybe I wanna put this in the memo field. It could be useful for me to use it on the memo field. So I'm gonna click here and then I'll click on uh, memo. Uh, that way this payment ID comes in the memo field. Then what I wanna do is I wanna select my gross payment amount, which is going to be this column here called collected. So I'm gonna hit the drop down here and go down to an option here that says gross. Let me make this window a little bit bigger, that way it's easier to read. So I'm gonna hit this drop down, go down and click on gross amount, okay? So because that column is the gross amount, this is what's gonna match my QuickBooks transactions. And the second column is gonna be this one called fees. I'm gonna go down here and click on transaction fee. For the, so for the time being, I have gross amount, transaction fee, payee, memo, and date. And this is actually sufficient for us to do the conversion. So when I click here where it says create the QBO, I'll hit yes. And my .QBO file has now been created. So when I go into QuickBooks, my next step is to go into the file menu, click utilities, import, web connect file. But before I do that, I wanna show you some context. So let's say for example, in my real bank account, when Square sends deposits into my real bank account, this is what it looks like, okay? It's a lump sum of multiple payments that I received for the day or for the weekend. Uh, and none of these payments are gonna match up an individual invoice because it's highly likely that I will receive more than one payment uh, per day. So I can't really match this up with specific invoices. Also, these payments are net of our Square fees. So, uh, so these payments themselves, the money that's coming into my actual real bank, it's never gonna match. However, when that money does come in, I'm gonna transfer that into another bank account, which in this case I call Square. I'm gonna show you the counterpart here. So when I click on my Square bank account, uh, I'm gonna see all the monies that are going from the Square bank account into my real Bank of America, Chase, whatever bank account. And this is, the, this is the account itself that I want to reconcile. This is the specific account that I want to download the transactions for. And when I do the next example, it's gonna make a lot of sense. Now, I wanna show you exactly what I mean by matching a QuickBooks transaction with my Square transaction. So for example, here's an invoice, which I created in QuickBooks before I did the payment in Square. It contains my customer information. It contains details about the work that we did. It contains the gross amount of the invoice, which is the most important part. I wanna be able to match that with Square. A similar example is a sales receipt. And then here's a sales receipt with a different customer, different service that was provided, and also a separate total amount uh, that we're gonna match up with Square. So when I go ahead and do my import for my QBO file, I'm gonna to go to File, Utilities, Import, Web Connect Activities. I'm gonna select my .QBO file that I recently created, converted with my tool. I'll click on Open. First time around, the system's gonna ask me uh, which QuickBooks bank from your chart of accounts matches this uh, online banking bank feeds QBO file. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it, and I'll select Square. Hit continue. When the import is finished, you're gonna get a confirmation box that says, all your transactions have been successfully read into QuickBooks. We'll hit okay. And it will take us to our bank feeds window, which by the way, we can always get to by going into banking, bank feeds, bank feeds center. So in here, I have 10 transactions that have been downloaded. I'll click on transaction list. And I can start matching some of these. So for example, because I've done transaction fees in the past, the system automatically renamed my transaction fees to merchant account fees. So all I have to do is just do it once and the system automatically will rename using rules all my transaction fees. These payments, however, I would have to match them with a specific QuickBooks transaction. So for example, 
I'm going to go here with this action and I'll click on add more details. And then judging by the amount here, 51.38, I can pick this sales receipt. I hit a check mark. Notice I don't have to put a negative fee or anything like that because that's been separate because that has been previously separated by the import. I'll click on add to QuickBooks. Okay, that would take care of that transaction. And let's say we had an invoice that was paid on 29 and I'll select this one here. I'll click select. I'll click on add more details. This time around, there's my open invoice that matches the payment. I'll select. Again, I don't have to net the fee manually here because it has been done for me by the import. I'll click Add to QuickBooks. And that's basically how the process works. At the end, when all your transactions have been downloaded and matched, you can go into the bank register and you can actually see all the monies in and out. If your actual bank is reconciled as well, and all the transfers from Square into the bank, the daily deposits, have been loaded in the system, your ending balance here should be zero. It is possible that you have an ending balance of some sort of positive amount if you have some payments that have not cleared the bank yet. However, it is important to reconcile the bank as well. So I'm going to show you what that reconciliation process will look like. I'm going to go into Banking, Reconcile. I'm going to select my Square account. Let's say I'm going to reconcile my Square account all the way to February 16th. Ending balance should be zero because there will never be any balance in the Square account. We'll hit continue and then basically I can choose my daily deposit I'll select all my deposits for the fourth for example and then on the left side I'll select my two fees and my daily square deposit for the bank that in itself will render zero balance let me do the next day. Here's my payment for 102.75. Here's my square fee. There's my daily bank deposit. And again, a difference of zero. Then I'll do my next couple of days here. Two payments, my two fees, and my net deposit. Again, a difference of zero. So this is just a, a really neat way to double check checks and balances that all the monies coming in from Square being deposited into the bank are being downloaded and matched against every single invoice or sales receipt you have in QuickBooks. And therefore, all your QuickBooks transactions and all your payments are being reconciled. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful.